Peace and Power. We're back live with Radio Radio, episode 37. Uh, when we left off, we were talking about uh, holding, what do we expect from celebrities? What do we expect from athletes? How to, how to hold them accountable? Is it even possible? Um, what relevance does this even have? You know, um, and so we, we did like a kind of a round robin of everybody's perspective on the subject. And then and it kind of brought up during the break, we were kind of talking about where else this conversation, um, what else applies, this conversation applies to. So um, I know that um, Brother Craig has something that he wanted to share about, you know, when, when, what happens when certain celebrities speak out. And then, and then you know, what, is, what have been some of the responses uh, from, the, from the media, from the masses? Uh, yes, I'm not sure. I'm gonna speak on exactly on what Chris Brown treated, uh, tweeted. I'm not sure how serious he was if he was saying it just to get a few tweets, a few likes, and everything. But he made a very good point, in my opinion. His tweet says, "I don't know, but I think Ebola academic is a form of population control. Ish is getting crazy, bruh." And <laughs> to me, That's you know, the only thing he's ever it, said that it, I agree with. It, 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 to me, you know, you know, it, it's kind of messed up because w- what was the outcome from that? Everybody got mad. Everybody's pointing the finger at him, telling him he needs to apologize. And what does he get up and do? He retreats again and he apologizes. Why does he apologize? Because he doesn't want to use lose fans. He doesn't want to be blackballed again. And I feel I I feel that's horrible for us athletes and us celebrities that we can't speak our mind. I mean, we're in a country where you say you got a freedom of speech, but you only got a freedom of speech when you're speaking what they want you to talk about. You can't sit up there and put the government or something on the line and expect nothing to come back. And like me right now, like I could be in trouble right now for what I'm doing. Do you think I care? Yeah, I care. But do I, I'm not going to change what I'm going to say. No, I'm going to say what's real. And no matter what the consequences are, I'm going to stay true to my word. And I feel that's one thing. That's one solution that athletes, a celebrity need to do. Yeah, I want to share um, on some level the just playing devil advocate. You know, there's the the spook that sat by the door, so to speak, um, mentality. There's a brother who plays for the Pacers named David West, and um, he found out that the uh, funeral for brother, master teacher, uh, Dr. Ben, was uh, a little short on the funds, and so he just went ahead and paid for whatever was remaining. Um, And the reason he did so is because he said Dr. Ben had changed his life, Um, but yet he was still in the NBA. He wasn't outspoken. You don't hear his name ever, you know, he's just a very laid back, kind of like Tim Duncan, you don't, they don't hear from him, they, they call it a bad file, he just go down of court and say, oh well. Um, but the point being is that you see, you see that there are people who are aware and conscious and are doing things um, and, and actually potentially uh, doing things in that community that you don't hear about because we have to face it, our media will always focus on the sob story, you know, so-and-so messed up, let's shame them but when they do something good you never hear about it you know the, the brother who has the the uh opening of the of the gym of the community center with the program he's not going to make the news you're never going to hear about the story um I, I will say some of it's the blame on us because where, where i'm going where i'm heading in the future is, is just looking at what are we doing again self-sustainability what are we doing to allow this and what we're doing is number one um a lot of people are giving their money to people who have no interest in their interest and number two, we're looking for these people to come and help us when it doesn't make any sense when you look at it that way. Um, but I do believe there is a certain level of uh, a certain level of expect expectation we have for people just to simply to be human. Um, when you see something that's inhumane, to say, "Hey, that's inhumane." But again, if your boss is the one doing the inhumane thing, or their boss is boss's boss are doing the humane thing it very it's not it's not gonna it's very likely you won't see these people saying hey but they can do certain things like david west um and and other people Uh, i know uh lindsey hunter who played for the pistons here in detroit he opened up a um, car shop he was doing uh basically a lot of the celebrities shack and different people come to detroit and they get their car souped up which of course is probably for more people who have a lot of money to burn but Again, it just it goes to show that there are some black people doing black businesses to to promote um, our our kind. It's just that you never hear about them. 
And so I think that's a really good a really good point. Um, and I, I don't think that, well, let me say, I'm not saying that people, everybody has to be, you know, very flamboyant and says, I'm putting $100 million into this and this and this. Um, because there, there are very, they're what they call silent, um, silent partners, or they're, um, how will we say, they're, they're people that they give anonymously, and, they, and, they, and some of these may be, you know, may be athletes, may be people who are celebrities and things of that nature. Uh, so there's two, there's two sides, there's definitely two sides to it, and there's, but how, however, there, there is very, it's very important for people, the masses, to see other people that, that are, um, have the, these godlike, you know, we give these godlike uh, uh, attention to, uh, see them doing these great things, because the masses, I mean, you know, in, in, in that, in that, in, in, in many instances, you know, these people that support them are like sheep, you know, and they're, you know, that's, they're the shepherds, so how how are you um, how are you contributing, and how how, are, how what do we what do we expect what do we really expect from from these um, from these athletes Do we expect every, them to tell you everything that they're doing for the community, or do we you know expect you them to you know keep it hush? I think somewhere in between, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's lifestyle is different. I don't expect Tim Duncan to throw us a you know, throw radio, radio a party. You know, he's just not his style. But maybe he'll cut a check. Who knows? And so, um, I got all, all off on a tangent. But the the main point is that there, there it's it's no one way. It's no one way to 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 really look at what to what to expect what to expect from celebrities. But I, I go back to the, the point that I made earlier. This is modern day Coliseum, and when you realize that it's not the it's not the the people on the court that really have the power, it's the people in the stands. Because if the people in the stands aren't there, there's no one for there's no reason for these other people to be there. And so that that's that's to me that's what it's ultimately gonna gonna amount to. You know, clicks, uh, views, and ratings are the new new way that the modern day Coliseum is populated, you know, not just on game day, you know, tweets, all of these things that, you know, all these, we have much more avenues to reach out to, uh, to, to celebrities now, you know, you can just go straight on their, um, straight on their Twitter or their Facebook or their whatever and message them or send them, send a message or post about them, tag them in it or, or, or whatever. And, and believe it or not, that can be very, be very effective as you just as you just shared with the with the Chris Brown um, situation. I never thought we'd talk about Chris Brown on the show. <laughs> this is that. I didn't know this was gonna happen. Um, so yeah, that's 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 what I, that's what I got. And while that's on my mind, speaking of music, the last song you heard, um, "Put These Hands on You," uh, shout out to T Folk, was out. made uh, especially for uh, Brother Craig uh, and his boxing. So uh, just want to shout out to T Folk. Uh, the Foundation of the King, go to tfolk.com. And, uh, yeah, just just want to let y'all know this positive. is uh, people taking that, that celebrity mentality and, and using it to uh, to support people that they deserve they deserve support. And I, and I definitely, uh, definitely appreciate the brother Breaking Chi coming to make that song for me. They made the song for me in, like, less than a week. I asked them for it. They did it no problem. We came out. We had a good time. We had a win. People were telling me, oh, no, you don't need to mess with a local artist artists and everything you need to come out to Eminem and you need to come out to Trick Trick and everything which is nothing wrong with Eminem or Trick Trick and everything like that but me I'm about bringing my people up and I was so glad they were able to help me and I was able to help them and I love the song I hope y'all do too yeah they are also responsible for our theme song and our shirts and pretty much everything I mean that that's that's our our partners the dream team um, yeah and, and also the the music video that's coming, 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 coming this coming. summer, coming, soon. <laughs> coming, it's coming. Is that off the grid, yeah, yeah. off the off grid. grid, yeah, which we're all in. So <laughs> this is a. But um, to your point, um, that's one thing I expect personally is that they use 
use that following to awaken the masses. I mean, because like I got a small following on Facebook, so I think I reach a lot more people on Facebook than I would without Facebook. Um, I, you know, uh, on average get like 200 likes, 100 shares. And it's like, so I use that to, to put out information. So it's like, I, I you know, daily reach thousands of people that I normally wouldn't reach without Facebook. So with them having millions of followers, I mean, you don't, you don't necessarily have to put out things that people would consider to be conspiracy theories. Like, you know, Ebola is a form of population control, but it is. what? I mean, we, we know it is, but I'm just saying, you don't, you don't even have to be that controversial. Just put out, read a book. I mean, you know, anything like that. You, How can you get negative backlash or negative feedback from that? Or, you know, turn off the TV or, I mean, anything. It's like, you. why not use that following to help people? Right? I mean, there's no need to put out fights and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. It's like, for what? I mean, that's that's just more entertainment that's not benefiting anybody why not use that following and that's kind of where I, I come to a place where I feel um, the majority of celebrities are kind of cherry picked so to speak um, like a LeBron James here's a kid jump out the roof in high school you know and anybody can remember back to how their high school mind was you know you wasn't really unless you had certain parents certain experiences you wasn't really deep into some of the stuff you are now looking to be off the grid, understanding consciousness. And so the first thing you do is you find somebody, you know, some, some somebody with a loan shark or whoever to kind of be around LeBron and start showing him what he can have and what he what, what his life is going to be like soon. And then, you know, um, for him, he skipped college, which I think is a big part of it too. If you don't go to college and start being around uh, people who are looking to understand themselves, um, you may not go to look, understand yourself. And so you got a lot of people who get, uh, very material focus when they first get involved, uh, even from the acting standpoint and things. You know, a kid, 18, 19 years old, want to be an actor. Um, people like Erica Badu's story is a little different where, you know, she she got her popularity later in her life, so she's already been through the struggle. Um, and, of course, we do have people, again, like uh, David Banner, even though people have, he, he has a particular story. He's kind of always been doing He's one of those guys who come out and make a song, but then behind closed doors he's doing his thing. Um, and then Hidden Colors come out, so then he kind of becomes more vocal because um, he sees the, the need. He realizes that more people are aware to what, what the message he has. So I say that to say that a lot of the people we look to, again, who a lot of people who have been coming, uh, bec become uh, some sort of a guy-like character um, become this way because people are looking for a guy like character. They don't believe in himself. And, and this person accepts the guy like character because they don't really understand themselves. They don't understand they may be coming uh, to be used as a tool. And so I, I'm a firm believer that they're selected. And they learned a lot from the Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X days where you put the wrong person on TV too many times. Mm -hmm. You know, you get you get this image and this, and this, this idea that is embedded in the people. And they're, they're looking to avoid that. So now all of our leaders are hand selected like Al Sharpton, Obama, um, you know, all of them, for the most part, are hand selected. That's why you don't have Umar Johnson on TV. You don't have uh, Brother Polite or Inrinus mm -hmm. Inky and uh, Dr. Sebi. You don't have these people on. Clean the fool. Clean the fool. You know, you don't have these people because they may change something. And they want everything to stay the same. Because well, as long as it's the same, they can control which direction it heads. What was that long, the word we use about creating a problem? Hegelian dialectic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Problem, That's reaction, solution. If things are too too chaotic, they can't use that philosophy because they can't they can't control and manipulate things. <clears throat> and it, it really speaks to I mean, like I said, the power of the media. Um, but it, I forget the acronym that Professor Griff used to describe the media: um, multi multi ethnic destruction in America, or something like that. You know, and it, don't get me wrong, the media can be used for for, for good, like the show. So we are, we're the counterbalance, the counterpunch to, to, um, to the to the mass media, and um, and when we come back from from break, we're going to talk about um, some of the, you know, what are some of the strategies we can use to, um, since, you know, celebrities and and sports and these things aren't going away anytime in the foreseeable future, um, what are some of the strategies that can be used uh, to 
take advantage of that and, and, and bring attention to and resources to um, conscious efforts and um, humanitarian efforts. And I uh, also want to talk about some of the celebrities. Uh, what happens to the celebrities that speak out? We kind of touched on that a little bit, but let's go a little deeper. And so um, this is Radio Radio, episode 37, coming to you Tuesday nights. Uh, if you got something to say, go on uh, urbannationradio.com slash live, post your comment, and we'll get to it. Peace and power. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> 